This episode of Brains on Games is about a set collection game with Vikings. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we're going to talk about a crazy set collecting game with a Viking theme that's coming up on Kickstarter very soon. It's a game that was sent to me by the designer last week, a game called Viking Raiders. You can see it says on the box, action, strategy, and mayhem, and that's exactly what you're going to get when you play this game. This is a game for kids age 9 and up. You can play a game in about 45 minutes to an hour, and it works with between 2 and 5 players, although I think it does get crazier at higher play counts. Let's talk a little bit about Viking Raiders. What you're going to do in a game of Viking Raiders is you're, you're trying to earn victory points. You're trying to be the first one to reach a set number of victory points in three different areas. You've got a market that's set up like this, and there's three different kinds of cards that you can see in this market. There are navy cards. They have a blue outline. There are clan cards that are green, and there are the golden ones. That's loot, so you need a certain number of victory points in each area. Now, that's going to depend on the number of players and how long you want the game to be. You decide that at the beginning, and you've got a couple of little cards that have victory conditions on them. So if you want a quick two-player game, you might play maybe to six victory points. That's what, what we did when we first played the game, because uh, it just came last week, and I quickly had to record something. So I learned to play a bunch of times. Just me and my son played. We played a bunch of games just to six victory points. But, I mean, you could go up to eight if you were feeling uh, really like you really wanted to play a, a longer game. Uh, of Viking Raiders. So you're trying to collect cards with victory points and the cards do have those victory points right here in the top corner. These cards are in a marketplace where you're going to purchase them from. So at the beginning of the game you shuffle up these marketplace cards and you deal out eight. There's always going to be eight on the table at any given time and these are the cards that you're trying to save up resources to buy. There's one other kind of card that you don't see in this marketplace. I should mention that you may notice, I don't know if you can see on the camera, the, the higher point cards, so the ones that are worth two or three, require you to already have some victory points in that area. Uh, so you need one clan victory point, for example, to purchase this village in addition to the resources that are shown here on the bottom of the card. So if you do happen to deal out uh, the marketplace and there are no one point cards because you'd already need to have something in that category in, in order to buy these other ones if there are no one point cards you shuffle everything up again you deal it out again so if people have bought up all of these you would refresh the marketplace the other kind of card that might pop up in the marketplace none of them showed up here when i dealt these out is an ability card now this is a card that doesn't earn you victory points but it does sit in front of you for the well, for the rest of the game, unless someone manages to steal it, there are cards that will allow you to steal other players' abilities. But this one, for example, would allow you to purchase cards here with one less resource. So if you're buying cards from the market in any one of the three categories, you're super efficient and it costs you one less resource. That can be a really valuable card, especially if you get it early in the game. But you're not going to get it too early in the game because it does require lots of resources to purchase this card. Another thing that you can decide on at the beginning of the game is that you can play with these chief cards and that gives the players sort of asymmetric player abilities. Each player might have some sort of special power that they can use in the game. It also allows them to buy mercenaries that can protect them from raids. So the, uh, the chief cards are a really good addition, I think, to add to the replayability. You shuffle these up and players will get one at the start of the game if you decide to play with them. But they're an optional addition, so it's really more for once you've kind of gotten used to the strategy and the mechanics of a game of Viking Raiders. Once you've decided if you're going to use Chieftains, you've decided on your victory conditions, you've set up the market like this, the next thing you're going to do is determine the starting player. And you just draw one of the Viking cards, and depending on which card it is that you draw, that's going to determine the rule for who's going to be the starting player. Uh, there's one card, I think, when we played 
where the person who last hurt themselves, who, who had a, some sort of an injury, would be the first player to play in the game. And then each player is going to get a hand of six cards to begin with. Now the cards in the Viking deck that you're getting are resource cards like the kinds of resources that would allow you to buy cards from the marketplace. So you might earn, you might have a gold card, you might have actual Vikings that will allow you to purchase some of these things. There are a few, whoops, there are a few wild cards as well. The Cornucopia is one that will, you can play it as any one resource. And there's Gift of the Gods that can allow you to play as two resources. That was the card I drew as the starting card. Um, another thing that you might wind up with in your hand are hidden victory points. So here I've got a clan card with one victory point on it. It's got that green outline. So this stays in my hand. And if I'm playing up to six victory points, really I only need five on the table face up. Uh, and then this one gets added on. So it might be a little surprise for the other players if you're able to hang on to it. Because the other kind of cards in this deck are action cards and the action cards allow you to do all kinds of things. You can steal another player's loot cards, for example. This one allows you to steal a loot card worth one victory point from another player. You might be able to take cards from their hand or take an ability card, these powerful ability cards. I think it's a, a Loki card that allows, I mean, he's the god of mischief, right? So a Loki card might allow you to take that, uh, to take that other player's ability card. This one allows you to take uh, to look at another player's hands, take two cards from them, and give them one of your cards in return. So not a bad card. You can really mess with the other players with cards like that. What you're going to do on your turn, you begin your turn by drawing two Viking cards, and then you can play an action card or purchase a card from the market. Or both so you're you are allowed to do both you may only have enough cards to do one you may not be able to do anything we did have a turn or two where there wasn't very much that we were able to do uh, when we played the game but here I am with just a, a, a winter raid and some wood cards in my hand so I'm not going to be able to buy anything here because you've got for example even this little ship this carvey it's called you require a food and a wood now I've got two wood and an action card. So I could buy that if I used up all of my cards, but I might not want to use up that extra card in order to do it. The, the really crazy thing about this game is that you can also do some raids. So as, as one of the players is getting closer to victory and they've got maybe maybe they've got all of their victory points in one area or the next one, you can play a raid card. There is another special card in here. I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly, but it does have a red outline, a Berserker card, which is sort of like the Nope card in Exploding Kittens or the Nay card in Unstable Unicorns. It's a canceling card. So if you've got a Berserker in your hand, you can cancel raids, you can cancel other action cards that the player has played. But if you do play a raid card and it doesn't get canceled by a Berserker, that means that you're going to choose one of those three categories where they're stacking up cards with victory points on them. So if a player is getting close to winning and they've got, I don't know, six loot cards, you might, you might say, okay, I'm going to raid you for your loot. And then the player will pick up their loot cards, three or four or however many cards they have. For each of the cards that they've picked up, they put a raid protection card in their hand and then they mix everything around and the raider chooses one. So you might get raid protection and then nothing happens. You don't win that raid. It's unsuccessful. Your action was wasted. Some of the raid cards do allow you to do something extra if you've won or if you've lost the raid. You might manage to steal one of their loot cards away from them or their clan cards or their navy cards depending on which uh, category you chose to raid in. This is a game that has very simple rules. It's simple to learn how to play, uh, which is why nine-year-olds shouldn't have any trouble figuring this out. Even younger kids could probably get the gist uh, of this game fairly quickly, right? There's only two things you can do, a maximum of two things you can do on your turn, and you might only have enough cards to do one of those things. The, the take that actions, the raiding mechanic allows you to stop one player from taking the lead, and it certainly makes things crazy and chaotic especially if other players get involved and try to cancel your plans by playing those berserker cards but you've got the the viking theme which i i think most kids 
would say, well, the Vikings are pretty exciting and interesting. Certainly, if you want to talk about action and mayhem, yeah, Vikings are a good theme to do that. You've got great artwork on the cards. Uh, and what are you doing, though? What are the skills that are involved in this game? You're, you're planning ahead and you're using hand management, right? Because you're budgeting, you only have a few actions and you only have a certain number of cards. So if I've got three action cards in my hand, I have to, I, I can only play one of them on my turn unless I play a special card that allows me to play two, which occasionally happens. You've got to decide if you're going to raid your friend or your parents or your kids, uh, which is also a decision that can be an interesting one. But you're really, you're planning ahead and you're trying to budget those actions and those cards, which means that you're exercising those executive functioning skills. You're trying to earn those points. So there's certainly some mental math and you're constantly looking at your opponent's totals and trying to figure out, well, do they have maybe a hidden victory point in their hand? Uh, maybe I need to grab one of the cards from the market only to prevent them from getting it. So there, you're... you're adjusting your plans on the fly as well and if you're doing that flexible kind of problem solving if you're really taking that flexible approach and constantly adjusting your your goals and and your immediate steps to reach those goals that's a fluid reasoning exercise too so you've got the executive functioning of planning ahead but you've got to be flexible in that plan because things are constantly changing i mean mayhem is a good word to put on the box of this game because if you've got a whole bunch of players who are canceling things and stealing things and changing grabbing cards from your hand your plan is constantly going to need adjustment and that in a nutshell is viking raiders it is a quick game that exercises those flexible problem solving and executive functioning skills it's got the the fun theme the great artwork uh, and I, i've got to thank the designer for sending viking raiders along this is coming up on kickstarter very soon i will put a link in the show notes to the campaign as soon as i get my hands on it if you have questions or suggestions you can leave them in the comments below this video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca brainsongames.ca is the website that's where future episodes will go and the previous ones are up there already brains on games is the twitter handle and the facebook page and the instagram feed so we're all over the place and if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones you can head on over to youtube and click that subscribe button thanks for joining me and hopefully i'll see you next time